it's time for another computer video. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, the, um, the last one people didn't really watch, so it's been a little while, but I'm doing the upgrades anyway, so might as well film it and make an episode out of it, right? Anywho, yeah, the last thing that system needed, my inspection terminal PC that no longer has any inspection terminal parts in it, whatever, the last thing it needed was a proper GPU, and today I have the solution to the... <laughs> no, no, I can't keep a straight face. No, this is... Uh, note the battle damage. It's pretty good. But uh, yeah, this is... My motivations for this or that it would be interesting, and that's really my only motivation. Because there are... There are problems with the idea of being an early adopter... Well, actually, it's been two years. A late adopter on just weird tech that's not quite ready yet, and... Well, there's two of them that really stand out to me in my use case here. I'm gonna go ahead and go through them now. Um, first of all, this thing has actually supposedly come a long way since launch. It used to be rather buggy and non-functional, but driver updates have supposedly brought it to the point where it is a proper, reasonable GPU. Um, well, I'm going to be using Ubuntu for this, which I have checked. Intel does have drivers for their ARC GPUs available for Ubuntu. That's part of the reason why I actually chose that operating system for this build in the first place, so that I could mess with one of these if I wanted to. But those drivers don't look like they've been adop uh, updated in a long time. So this may be buggy and unusable. And also... Um, it's optimized for, like, DirectX 12 and newer. Uh, I don't play new games because they're not fun anymore. I play older stuff, so there is going to be a performance hit, presumably, with that. And this is just stuff that I know immediately without having to even try it, that these are going to be issues. That being said... Nah, I don't have a good explanation. Let's get this, let's get this freaking thing open. The, the Sparkle computer people, as far as I can tell, they're doing a fine job. So I went with something from them. Oh wow, this box is crap. That's fine. That's fine, the box could be crap if it wants to be. deep does the battle damage go? Oh yeah, she's got a little bit of battle damage there too. It's not ideal. Yeah, Amazon taught me that the uh, graphics card will make a nice thump if you toss it onto a brick porch. But with any luck, that's going to be the least of our worries. There it is, and it's anti-static back... What is... very cold. Oh, are these... Is this a prop to keep it from sagging, maybe? It kind of has that look to it. Uh, I can't mount this like a normal GPU, so I do have this whole freaking bracket thing anyway. So I shouldn't need to... Oh my goodness, modern graphic cards are huge. Look at this thing. Should I be taking it in another bag right now? I don't know. There's absolutely no paperwork or documentation in here, so that's good. There's not even instructions, so I technically can't even see if these are supposed to be a stand. And yeah, it's got the little cap thing on it and everything, that's fine. Here it is! It's it's, it's, it's very large, and it's very cold, it's also quite heavy. Uh, I know the new B-series GPUs are out, and they probably beat the crap out of this thing, but 
I'm gonna be trying to install it in a Linux system, so I'm gonna go with the oldest equipment I can get. Just try to make it easier. I wonder if it'll work or not. Oh, it is quite cold. It is fogging up. That's not great. All right, let's do the install. All right, I still don't have a video capture rig, so we're just going to watch me play this on my monitor. This is, of course, without the upgraded graphics card. I don't know if you can tell, but the frame rate is is bad. I guess that upgraded graphics card. No, I don't have. This is just onboard graphics. It seems like it's actually working way better than normal. Let's smash the building. I mean, like it works. It's not great. You can see a lot of motion blur, and again, quite low frame rates. Usually at this point, I think this game is using like a weird freaking high angle to try to disguise the difficulties it's having drawing the environment. Maybe they updated it and it doesn't do that anymore. I probably should have turned the lights off. The next on the list is beamng.drive. It, uh, it hates existing, especially if you go someplace where there's stuff. And again, this is, I think it's a dual core GPU that's the, oh yeah, there she goes. Can you, can you hear the latency? Like, I genuinely have a hard time driving in this level because, oh, it hates this so much. The frame rate is real bad. Well, yep, the inevitable. Yep, correct. Anyway, it hates that. Yeah, this is a nice atmospheric game. I think I'm playing it at minimum settings. Do you want to, do you want to work? It's reasonably snappy. I don't know if it'll come across in the, the video with the light bloom happening there, but it just looks like there's sprinklers going off constantly. There's like a fuzziness and glimmer that I don't think are supposed to actually be there. I don't have a means of turning that off. I mean, like looking at the, just the stairs in the middle distance, like it's not happy with the tiny dual core GPU built into the CPU. See, when I started this process, I thought, oh, that's a really, really interesting place to put a power supply. And now I'm seeing, like, yeah, it obstructs the cooler and the PCIe slot we're looking for for the graphics card. So, to try to combat this, I have this stupid Cooler Master thing, which might get it out of the way enough to work? Question mark? Of course this thing's like a pile of crap. Like this, one of these screws here is already ruined. Yeah, that one here. Just Cooler Master being Cooler Master. Let's see if I can make it work. It's the next day. I am sufficiently caffeinated now. I think I think this is in there. Uh, I am having to use the wrong PCIe slot because the cable on this ridiculous thing won't quite reach the one I want, but the other one looks like it's the same size. It may still work? Question mark? 
probably not as well, uh, but it might work. I've got the connectors, the power on there. That's a nightmare because of course the one spot they chose to put power connectors is the one spot where I can't easily put anything. Um, this has also added an HDMI cable that cannot really be unplugged. It is fed through there because there's no other place to put it because these wires are right up against here. And so yeah, now I have many more cables that need to go with the computer cassette when it's removed from its assembly. I have done a little bit of cable management. Not, not, I mean, there's no point because there's nowhere to feed anything other than on top of the computer, but I've tied it up so maybe it won't get in fans. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Yeah, let's get some drivers in this thing and see if it runs. It did work in the wrong PCIe slot. It's a little bit weird, which, I mean, there's two dozen reasons that could be, it might not be it, but I managed to get a hold of a PCI extension cable, making this lovely, fugly setup that actually has it plugged into the correct port with too much cable. Oh, it looks so bad, but there we go. Let's, let's give that a try, huh? Property damage. A properly fun $5 game where you destroy a city. Well, let's see, how is it going? I do, yeah, this is definitely going much better with it plugged into the proper slot. But that's not what we care about, because obviously you're not supposed to plug the graphics card into the wrong slot. Compared to the onboard graphics, it's amazing. Like, look at that realistic non-binary hyena. That is absolutely correct. No weird blurriness, no weird frame rate issues. Freaking glorious. Here we go. This is a different level, but you can really easily see some interesting stuff here. Like that, can you see up there? Stuff's popping in. Hang on, I think there's a cliff up here where you can see it better. Like, it's doing good frames per second. I'm getting like 80 plus. And this is ultra settings. But like, yeah, look, look at that hill coming up. There's freaking nothing on it. And as we get close to it, eventually it starts to load stuff in. There's also like this weird shimmering texture on the trees at all distances. Like, it's, like don't get me wrong, definitely way smoother. But like, just stuff about like handling the textures, it's kinda not doing as great. Like these weirdly small textures in the road, just like a little bit in front of my vehicle. They don't look like they're supposed to look like that. And again, all the trees shifting around. I mean, like, the reflection quality everywhere is great. All over the car, that paint looks fantastic. I think ray tracing is working, just looking at it. So that's a step up. But then there's just weird stuff where it doesn't... I mean, uh, there's all sorts of places this could be coming from. This could be Proton, since this is not intended to be used in the system. This could be, um... This could be problems with... Well, the process for downloading drivers for this was actually terrible. I'm pretty sure the drivers lost a little bit of paint on the, on the way into the computer here. So maybe there's something not quite working right on the Intel GPU drivers. And it could literally just be that BeamNG has weird stuff happening, because this is a weird freaking game. That being said, this is another map where I would have gotten probably a good cap of 5 frames per second with the onboard graphics. So I will take 90 and it looks a little bit weird, you know. Like, this is snappy and playable, and that's freaking fantastic in comparison to what I've been working with. Yeah, the other benchmark, Pools, is... I mean, it's better. It's still very foggy and artifacty. It's tricky, because it is also kind of the aesthetic they're going for. I 
really do need to turn off the light. This is a very dark game. This game especially, you can't see anything with that freaking light bloom happening. Alright, how's this look? Much better. Where was I? Yeah, um, some of the artifactiness is kind of built in. I have turned it down wherever it's possible to turn it down, but it's pretty baked into the visuals. see weird stuff happening when I turn. In this case, however, it is absolutely not Proton, because this, if I remember correctly, actually does have a Linux version that I'm running. I'm not using a Proton emulator to make a freaking Windows game work on a real computer. So it's going definitely better than the onboard graphics were. Like, if you look at, like, the reflection and stuff, it is certainly a more capable unit by a substantial margin. It's just artistic choices making this look a little bit weird, I think. Closing comments. Okay, um... The worst part about this has been trying to deal with Intel and their stuff. Um, you go to the downloads, and it has, like, a couple of Windows versions, and it's like, Ubuntu, click here. It has a link. You click there, and it goes to not a download, it goes to some other page. And it says, oh, yeah, 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 you can click here. You click there, and it takes you to where you can look at the scripts you have to plug into the command line to download their drivers. Okay, that's fine. You, 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 you use Linux, you're, this sort of thing is going to happen. That I made reference during one of the playtesting videos that I think the drivers lost a little paint on the way to the computer. It works, but it got mad. It gave a weird error code about there's no release file at this address, and can't update from unsecured repository. Thanks so much, Intel. That's just great. You're such a giant company. You can't work this out. Anyway, finally, after much digging, found the commands to temporarily let it update from an unsecured repository, thoroughly surrounded by, like, don't do this, you know. Did that. Still comes up with an error code, because, yeah, there's, there's not anything at that address for it to actually install at all like what all of that lovely and confusing mildly broken drivers i'm using exactly the steps they say for my exact release of ubuntu and it's a bit broken to the extent that as i went back to go capture some images it appears to have bricked my os install which not too big a deal I don't keep anything on that computer other than the installs off of Steam. Steam is all online anyway, so none of that matters. It's just can... Intel. Can you not? Can, can you test whether your drivers work on this free operating system? Like, I, you're not telling me that nowhere at the Intel headquarters... Is there a junk computer that they can slot a prototype GPU into and actually test that the driver downloads work? Uh, anyway, I'm in the process of making a new boot disk because it doesn't seem to want the one I have anymore. And yeah, I did figure this kind of thing would happen, but I figured it would be interesting. And I don't know if it's been interesting for you. It's been interesting to me, as you can tell by my tone of voice, but it's, it's, it's whatever. Um, thank you for watching. If you are, feel free to like and subscribe. I hope you have a good evening.